Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. This is the place where we take a no bullshit look at life's little lessons. Here, together, we find the spiritual glory in even the most wicked hard story. This is a journey from fear back to love and how we can find our greatest strength and happiness in some of the most unlikely places. I believe that if you're willing to change your mind, you can totally change your life. So, are you ready to rewrite your story and choose to live free? Let's do this. Hey, you guys, and welcome to, I think it's episode 27 of the Karen Kenny Show. So, as you might be able to tell from my voice, and if you're watching this video, you see me, that I keep wiping my nose. Um, so, my, my show is a little more subdued, and a little more somber today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why. So, um, let's, start, let's start off with this. The title, the title of episode 27, If You Found Out You Were Dying if you knew that you were dying. And this is a subject I just want to broach because, you know, um, last week's episode, episode 26 was, was called uh, like basically don't, don't waste anybody's time. <laughs> don't waste anybody's fucking time. And one of the things that I always say is that I learned at a very young age, you know, I learned it at 12 years old when my mother died because I'm pretty sure my mother was the first person that I personally knew that died and uh, at 12 years old. And I think I really started to understand at a very young age. There were a lot of things, there were a lot of things that I did not understand right away after my mother was killed. But this was something that uh, really kind of sunk in, that, that time was not a renewable resource and that, um, and that life was not guaranteed, that things could change in the blink of an eye, that, that people die, that things change, that, um, that we never know man, do we never know when the last exhale is coming. And that's something that I really started to understand when um, I also became a yoga teacher like 20 years ago. And so here's the deal. Like I do these things weekly, right? And there are going to be weeks where something happens and I know right away, oh, this is what I want to talk about. This is what I'm fired up about. This is what's on my mind. Um, and then there are other times when I have to wait for the inspiration. I have to wait for something to arise in my mind, or I have a situation out in public, or I bump up against something or myself <laughs> like in my mind. And so I've been thinking a lot about um, just this concept of time. And, you know, my birthday's coming up in about six weeks-ish, something like that. I'm turning 51, and 51 is just kind of a weird number. <laughs> And I've just been kind of thinking about like, shit, man, I'm getting older. And like, and I always talk about this, like with the time that I have left, like what, what, what do I want to do? So as I was just sitting here, um, my, my, my friend, as I call her, Erron, <laughs> my friend Erron, who helps me, um, she's on my podcast team and she helps me with my podcast. And she just said to me, hey, do you have a show coming tonight? And I said, I'm waiting for inspiration to strike um, because I had been thinking a lot about time, but I, you know, I just did a thing on time like last week, uh, you know, don't waste anybody's time. So I didn't want to repeat it. And then as I was sitting in front of my computer, I had just finished answering her. Uh, I found out, I found out that somebody who I had had the, the pleasure to meet in person um, a few times, uh, a couple of times, actually, to be more specific, a couple of times, not a few times, so twice, um, and who was a brilliant speaker an incredible human being and so full of such um, gratitude and compassion and humanity. And his name was Sean Stevenson. And, and he, uh, if you guys don't know who Sean is, man, just go Google him. He is a phenomenon. <laughs> and he's one of the best speakers that I've ever had the pleasure of hearing speak. And he affected me on a much deeper level of just being an entrepreneur and a speaker and all this stuff. I mean, his spirit, he fully, in his tiny little body, he encapsulated like so much spirit, so much light, uh, so much humor, so much just meaning. And he gave so much to the world in the, in the short time that he was here. And so while I was sitting in front of the computer waiting for inspiration, I found out that um, Sean, I, I saw a post from his from his wife that um, he had, 
he had passed away. And um, it got me to thinking about, and completely unexpectedly, completely unexpectedly. So I'm still a little bit in shock as I'm doing this. And um, that's why you can tell, like, I'm really kind of subdued because my, my, my mind is still kind of um, making sense of the senseless. That's what happens. But I wanted to be professional and I wanted to make sure that I did my show. And I thought this is a really powerful opportunity for me to kind of dive a little more deeper, in, deeper into this, like not taking our time here for granted. Um, you know, like not waiting to do the things that we said we want to do, not waiting to tell people that we love them, not having regrets. Like, man, with this life that we have, with this time that we have, we need to like really fully invest and like go all in and uh, not be afraid to be seen and not be afraid to express and to connect and to be vulnerable and to really uh, let our light shine and to be helpful and to be powerful uh, while we are here. And it got me to thinking, um, it got me to thinking about, you know, if people knew that they were dying and Sean, um, this was, he had, he ended up having, he had a, a lifelong disease. Like I said, you can read about his condition and who he was. If you look him up, Sean Stevenson, um, but he didn't actually end up, I think, dying from his disease. He ended up having um, a head injury and he had to have emergency surgery and, and he did not unfortunately survive it. And his wife said that right up until the end, he was fully Sean and he fully lived his message. And his last words were, this happened for me. Uh, it didn't happen to me. And uh, so many of us in, in the transformational world, in the spiritual world, we talk about this concept about things happening for us and not to us. Um, and the fact that these were his last words, just um, they make me you know, emotional that he, he really lived it right up into um, his last moments. And, and he, was, um, he was a fierce little spirit, man. He was a big spirit <laughs> in a little body. And I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling really super grateful that um, I got to know him and hear him speak and to be in his genius. Um, so it got me to wondering this, this concept, right? Like if people knew that they were dying, if you knew that you were dying, <laughs> you know, would you, would you finally, like, as I say, cut the shit already, <laughs> would you finally get down to the business of doing this spiritual work that you came here to do? Would you finally get down to the business of stop making excuses? for the choices that you're making? Would you stop blaming your life on your circumstances? Would you get down to the business of what I call like living and loving and forgiving? Because this is what's really being asked of us, right? Especially when we get these really potent and poignant and um, powerful reminders like when we lose somebody that we love or somebody that we respect or a mentor or somebody we've looked up to, uh, people in our life who have made a difference. And then all of a sudden their physical presence is gone. They'll always live on inside of us and our memories and in, in our love for them, all the love that was given and received. Um, but when a person is no longer literally on the planet, you know, it, it's this moment of like, whoa. And, and that's one of the most poignant things. I, I've seen people's deaths be one of the most powerful transformational opportunities for the people who are left behind. And so I often wonder to myself, you know, if you really knew that you were dying, you know, would you start to rewrite your own stories? Would you start writing stories in your own favor? And would you start writing your stories that you love to write in your mind about each other? Would we start to write them in their favor too? And when I was thinking about all of this and I was thinking about Sean, I, I remembered this quote that I had posted on Facebook like last year sometimes. And, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. Uh, and I don't know who said it. It's just kind of like this theoretical question. Um, and here it is. It says, and I, and I want you to take a moment. If you're listening to this at home, I'm going to ask this question. And then you can hit the pause button if you want to. And really just take a moment to go within and answer this question because I think it's really, really really uh, an important question to ask ourselves. And it says, if you found out you were dying, would you be nicer? Would you love more? Would you try something new? Well, you are. We all are. 
And that's the thing, right? So here's one of the most powerful things about this world. And, and we talk about this in A Course in Miracles. Like I always say that this world is a great big illusion. And in yoga, we call it the great Maya. I mean, in yoga, we call it Maya, the illusion. And A Course in Miracles, we call it the dream. And, but while we're here, while it feels like we're embodied here in the illusion and in the dream, I always say this is how it goes, right? We're born, a bunch of shit is wicked hot. <laughs> And sometimes beautiful and amazing, right? But a lot of it is wicked hot. And like, then we, then we die. Like this shit is not rigged in our favor. As soon as we have a physical body, like we're fucking screwed. <laughs> because look, here's the one thing we all know. We're all going to die, right? If you're born, right? If you come in, you're born, like you're going to die. It's like, it's like a guaranteed no, no brainer, right? And so here's the thing. I always say like, we're already dying, you know, like I'm 51 and I say like, I'm now like in the second half of my life. But as soon as we're embodied, the guaranteed is that this meat sausage, this meat puppet, it's going to die. So what if we stop taking the time that we have left for granted? You know, what if with, with whatever time that we've been given, we decide to just cut the shit already <laughs> and go out there and love like with everything that we've got. And for a lot of people, they have a hard time showing up fully and loving with everything that they've got because they've got this all this bullshit that they haven't dealt with. They've got all these old stories, you know, that they haven't dealt with, like all these things, all these unfinished, um, you know, paths that still need to be healed. And so I talked about this in that post that I did a few years ago, and I and I jotted down some notes for myself. So those of you who are watching you might see me looking at them because i don't want to forget this so this is kind of what i wanted to to share with you like if you found out you were dying would you finally cut the shit and get down to the business of healing right the parts of you that you believe are broken or wounded or whatever and i always say like who you are as a child of god that perfect part of you is fully intact but it's the belief it's the belief that somehow we are broken or wounded and stuff. It's the belief that actually needs to be healed. And so here's the thing. We're here in this world. We've got a certain amount of time. None of it is guaranteed. We don't know when we're going to die. Like Sean certainly did not know, you know, that yesterday, last night was going to be his last moments on earth. Probably didn't know that a few days ago. So here's the thing. We've got these bodies. Let's use them. Let's give them a purpose. Let's assign these bodies over to the divine, to your spiritual team, to Holy Spirit to use. So let's use these bodies as a delivery system to share compassion and kindness and friendship and forgiveness and for laughter and for picking each other up and not tearing each other down. Let's use it for building community and giving hugs to lend a helping hand. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the deal. These bodies are going to fall away one day. And my, my meditation teacher, Aknatha Shwaran, you know, he was, um, he was from India, so his skin was like a beautiful shade of, of brown, of tan, as he would often call it. And he also says, he goes, like, like my skin, I have this jacket made of wool, and it's tan. And, you know, when this jacket gets worn out, I'm going to have to get rid of it, <laughs> right? And in, at some point, there's no more taking it to the tailor. It's like the thing's got to go. And he talked about his body as being the same thing. Like, at some point, it was going to be time. To, to, to turn the code in <laughs> and I always to retire the code and I always talk a bit about these bodies as being like costumes that we need to return to the costume shop after the party is over you know and look our bodies are going to fall away one day and they all do and this is just part of the human condition but our spirit the thing that lives within us the thing that we really are you know this is a powerful way to extend divine love you know, and we can, we can use our bodies to extend love while we're here. And I don't mean that like in just a sexual way. I mean, we can really use our bodies, right? Our minds, our mouths, our hands, our feet to do good deeds, to help each other, to be kind, to pick each other up, you know, and this powerful uh, force that lives within us, it, it, we've got to use it with the time that we have left. And I know some of you who are listening to this, you know, you also had early losses or you've already lost people that you love. Could be your parents, your grandparents, friends, siblings, children, pets, you know, and um, with the unguaranteed time we have left, I want people to be thinking about this. Like, 
who are you going to be? And where are you going to go? And what are you going to do? How are you going to show up with the time that you have left? And I've asked this question. This is a theme. Like I've asked this question many, many times. I've put this out there many times, not on the podcast yet, because I've had several friends who were diagnosed, people I've loved, you know, who got cancer and who were diagnosed. And I, and I knew this young woman once. She was a young mother. And she knew that her time was coming. And she had, she had babies. And, and the beautiful and graceful way that she spent these last moments of hers on earth, her courage and her conviction to be present, even in her dying process to me, was, was remarkable. I mean, it was remarkable. And I had so much, like, just respect and reverence for her strength. And her ability to accept, okay, this is what's happening. She found out she was dying and she made a conscious choice. But here's the thing, you guys. We're all dying. Like the clock is a ticking. And so it's time for us to really drop in and get serious and to ask ourselves the questions with the time that I have left. What do I want to do? And I just know that like for me, it's like my main thing is I say, if I, if I was to die today, like if I was like told like you got 24 hours to live or whatever, my, my biggest and only regret would probably be, look, I have other little regrets, like things when I wish I had been nicer or made a better choice or a better decision, I'd been kind and more patient. Of course, those little things, but those are like, that, that just kind of comes with the human territory. But my only big one right now would be that I hadn't finished my book yet. Because that's like a legacy piece. Like that is like a love letter to my mother. Um, and so that's why like I'm so committed to getting this first draft done in the next two years because it's like, this is it. I know the clock is ticking and, and I don't want to, I don't want to miss out. You know, um, A Course in Miracles and I'm sure somewhere in the Bible and other faith and spiritual traditions, it says you are the light of the world. And if I am the light of the world, then my only job is to extend that light. And I really believe that part of how I get to do that besides, you know, using my big mouth <laughs> to talk to people and help people and to guide people and to mentor people uh, is to, um, to use my voice, you know, to speak up in lots of different ways to speak up for the voiceless, but also to use my voice to um, finish this book. And so that's one of the things, you guys, that I just wanted to kind of put out there for you, for you today. And I'm sorry if this isn't like wicked, coherent and like wicked, like, you know, succinct. Uh, like I said, I feel like part of my mind is kind of like I've been knocked upside the hell head and I'm still kind of rattling around in there. Um, but I wanted to talk about this a little bit while it was fresh, because I think this is something that we, um, we need to take more seriously about this time that we have and how we want to live. I, I know so many people um, who are in hospice work. And they've reported back to me, as they say, the regrets of the dying. And I hear these stories and it's always like getting punched in the gut. It makes me so sad to think about people leaving with things unsaid and relationships um, that still had um, unresolved issues and un -things, unsaid things. And so I really want to encourage you to, um, and this is for me too, like I'm encouraging you, but this is for me too, to like double down double down in my conviction, to double down in my commitment uh, to getting done what I came here to do. And, um, you know, next week or this week, or you'll be hearing this next week. So I'm opening up the doors next week to my group coaching program. And look, I'm not even really trying to sell this to you. I'm just letting you know, because what I'm, what I'm trying to make clear is, is that I've known a lot of you and I've heard from a lot of you over the years that you have some stuff that's unresolved. And some of your stuff that's unresolved is, is with yourself, with choices that you've made in the past or things that you've done in the past, with relationships with your parents, some of whom are dead, um, relationships with some choices um, that you've made or some things that have gone down in your life that you haven't kind of have been able to um, give meaning to, like you're living in the old story of it. You haven't moved into the glory piece of it yet. So please hear me when I say this. I really mean this. I, I'm only letting you know about this because it feels so important right now. Like just the immediacy of, of like, like Sean being gone and going like, what the fuck? Like what the fuck just happened? Right? Like I know what happened, but like what the hell happened? 
And uh, this is something we wrestle with a lot as writers. So if you're somebody who has some unresolved stuff, if you're ready to cut the shit and if you're really ready to do the work and to dive deep into these things, to get some traction around this stuff, to get some healing, some forward momentum, and you need some support or some help navigating your grief or the stuff that's like, you know, been kind of like just back there getting in your way, keeping you stuck, keeping you fearful, keeping you separate from your source. If there's some big forgiveness work that you need to do, um, the doors are opening up to my program. And all you have to do, if it's something that resonates with you, if, if you're hearing this and it lands in your heart, you just go to my website to the work with me page and, um, and find me and, you know, fill out a breakthrough form. And we can talk about, we can talk about how we could maybe uh, work together in moving forward in healing some of this stuff in, in facing some of these fears in dealing with some of this stuff before it's too late. Um, you know, it's the same thing with me. Like I have mentors, I have people in my life who help me and who have helped me recently start to think about, um, you know, some pockets, some little areas, uh, in my life that needed just a little more attention, you know? And uh, I'm so grateful and happy to be looking at that because it's going to make me an even more, I think, um, compassionate and aware uh, human being. And so I uh, encourage you to keep doing the work because I, I'm still doing the work. <laughs> we're all doing it and we're all doing it together. And, and I think it was that movie. Ugh. I can't think of what it was if it was like, it's a wonderful life where like, it's like, oh, another angel got its wings. And I really believe that whenever one of us like gets our wings, like we all get our wings. And I don't mean like when one of us dies, I'm saying whenever one of us rises up and elevates up, we take everybody else with us. And so that's, that's what I got for you today. And I'm sorry, like I said, if it's a little rambling and weird, um, I didn't want to be um, irresponsible. I wanted to make sure that I put something out and maybe something that was helpful. And so I'm going to repeat that quote one more time. If you found out you were dying, would you be nicer? Would you love more? Would you try something new? Well, you are. We all are. And so with this knowledge, what are we going to do with it? What kind of new choices are we going to be making? Are we ready to get down to the business of forgiveness? Are we ready to get down to the business of taking responsibility for our inner peace and happiness? Are we ready to start to, to transform these old stories into our glory? To move from a, a thought system of fear to a thought system of love? And are we ready to, to kind of, I would say, move from the pain to the peace and from the wound to the wisdom? Because this is what we're called here to do, right? And I, I would be honored. I would be honored to walk part of the way with you on your spiritual journey. And um, the other announcement is just that, um, so your Story to Your Glory group, coach, group coaching program opens up, but also the next Sunday spiritual. Remember, the Sunday spiritual is a free resource for you guys, a spiritual community of, of, of spiritual fellowship. We meet online and you just have to sign up for it and then you'll get all the links to join us. And that's Sunday, September 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern. And that is happening, um, let's see, the, if you just go to my website, the link is already up and live. And it's just Karen Kenny, K-E-N-N-E-Y dot com backslash the Sunday spiritual. And so you guys, um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your compassion and your understanding with me being a little like, because eh, I'm still, like I said, I'm, I just found out this news before I went live. And I'm um, just kind of trying to process that the world has lost an incredible human being, an incredible spirit. And you guys, seriously, do me a favor. Go check him out. Sean Stevenson. Uh, he was something else. And he was an incredible teacher for me in the short time that I've known him. Uh, an incredible example of how to use your light to make the world uh, a brighter place, to enlighten uh, in your presence. So wherever you go, may you be a blessing. I see you. I celebrate you. I appreciate you. And I love you. Bye. Hey, 
you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review. Because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing. <laughs>